Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and it is the first Tuesday of the month, and you know what that means if you are a regular here. It is time for Unreal Christmas in uh, September. Wow, it's September already. Anyways, we get five free assets, uh, free for the month, yours to keep forever, so long as you air quotes buy them before the first Tuesday of next month. And let's just jump in with a hands-on. We're going to look at four of these assets. One of them I actually uh, don't have access to right now, but we will cover it as well. The first one we are looking at right now, uh, this is a safe house. Uh, it is, well... Pretty much what it says on the tin. It is a, uh, you know, a hidey hole. When the uh, zombies come, this is where you go. Uh, pretty straightforward asset. One thing to know about all of these assets, again, if you're using Unreal Engine uh, 5.1 or 5.2, it might look very dark to you. What you want to do is come up here to the outliner, go to uh, the search, search for the post-process volume, and then what you're looking for is these two values right here, min EV100 and max EV100. These were actually changed in name, and I think that's what's causing the problem. And a lot of times the min value is set way too high, or it is set at the same value as the max, and you end up these very dark environments. So all you want to do is locate that guy right there and switch that back to zero and it should have much more proper lighting. So that's something you're going to find with all of these assets if you are using a uh, version of Unreal Engine like 5.1 or 5.2. Now, here's the same asset. It's just the overview view of everything there. So it's obviously very modular in nature. Uh, everything used to create this environment is here. Uh, so if you just need uh, some weapons or uh, wrenches or food tins or a Jeep, etc., cetera, uh, could be you could just pull an individual aspect out of here. Obviously, you've got the building itself and all the pieces that go together to create it. So that's item number one. That is the safe house. Next up, we have Palace Hall. This is, I don't know, Victorian era, dining room, palace, uh, everything you see here. The lighting in the demo is very strange. By the way, if you do not change the EV settings, it's pretty much just pitch black. Uh, but you get an idea of what this environment is all about. Uh, so you got dining settings, you've got uh, all of the, the kit used to create this guy, way overexposed out here right now. Let's go take a look at the overview map on this guy get an idea of the content. So again, uh, modular walls for creating that style of building. Uh, you got a variety of tables and tablecloths. You got some, um, you know, rot gates. Uh, and then, yeah, you got uh, some very, very, very large silverware over here, glasses and so on. A uh, pretty straightforward asset set there. So that one there is the uh, Palace Hall. And then finally, for the last of the, uh, we'll call it 3D model type packs, uh, we have the um, Arch Viz Interiors Volume 3. So if you want to do an indoor space of like a modern style apartment, uh, that is what this one contains. My, my scroll speed is way too high. So you've got things here like uh, a chair to sit and some plants, a table, um, you know, the kind of things that you would find inside of a condo setting. We've got a ton of ArchViz content at this point in time, so if you're trying to create a realistic setting, uh, you should have quite a bit to work with. Uh, I think we may have even gotten uh, some of the packs for this guy in the past, uh, same creator, just a different volume. Let's go take a quick look at the overview map for this guy, so you got an idea of what made up that space. So we got a bunch of like vases, and I got some uh, potted plants, some table books, including the uh, Washington Columbia book, and the freelancer's guide. On top of that, we got uh, you know just various little knickknacks to go in the environment space. Uh, um, plethora of furniture. We got some uh, shopping bags going on here. Uh, we have a bed, a whole kitchen setup. It is uh, one piece in this case, so it's um, you know a, a single unit in in this scenario. Uh, not as quite as modular as some of the other stuff we saw. And we got a TV, some lighting, and so on. Again, a pretty straightforward asset pack, and that is the Arch Viz Interior. So now the next one we're looking at actually installs itself as an engine plugin. So you have to add it to the game engine, and then what you do is you look for Quest, and you will find it right here. It is Quest Editor. Go ahead and enable that guy, and then once that is enabled, uh, it will be available. It, it depends on which version you're running. If you're running an older version, it'll be under Windows something or other. Uh, under 5.1 or 5.2, it'll be under Tools, uh, and then it is available where did you go tools uh, editor utility widgets quest editor 
And this guy is for doing uh, branching dialogues and paths and so on. So here you can see one example. This is a city guard in the game. Now this is more than just an editor type environment for creating these branching quests. It also comes with a number of C++ and blueprint classes for actually consuming these things. So you can see an example of, uh, you know, a conversation with a city guard here. Uh, we do another example here using a timer. Uh, pretty straightforward. Again, we've got uh, other options. So single sentence, detailed conversations, and so on. Uh, here are various different dialogues available. You do have an NPC editor here as well. And then again, you've got all the uh, corresponding stuff that goes with this as well, again, so uh, that you can uh, consume the content that you're creating here. So if you're trying to create uh, branching conversations or quest trees for your game, this could be an interesting one for you. I think for a lot of you, this one's going to probably be the most interesting asset in this particular um, giveaway. Uh, so so this one here is the uh, Quest Editor Engine plugin, and now we're just going to head on over to the uh, the assets on the Epic Game Store. So a quick recap and a reminder, there is one other asset available. So the first one we've got here is Safe House uh, for creating, again, uh, Safe House style environment. Uh, 484 meshes in that guy. Uh, then next up after that one, we have the Palace Hall. Uh, so this one is, I think it's much smaller. So 83 textures and... Uh, 16 meshes of that set, so 48 total meshes there. Again, a much smaller pack overall. Uh, then we got the Archviz interior. Uh, so this one, actually no details of actually the amount of content there. Oh, 72 textures, 96 uh, materials, 84 unique meshes in that pack. And then we've got the Quest Editor plugin. Again, a plugin to manage and create quests and dialogues for NPCs. So, uh, very dynamic, customizable features. There is a ton to it. The documentation is available here. They do have a very short video showcasing uh, what it is capable of here. Uh, but the breakdown is here. So quests and dialogue systems. You can have simultaneous quests. You can have things like timer-based quests, um, branching quests, non-linear quests, and so on. Uh, it is, again, implemented as a high plus blueprints and 45 plus C++ plus plus classes. So you also have all of the classes you need to actually use these contents. And then again, there is that one other item uh, that I just don't have access to, but it's not really that big of a deal because again, it's a very cheap asset in this particular case, uh, but it is the basic melee combat system. So it's a simple component, handles all basic aspects of melee combat, like attack sequences and patterns, dodging, blocking, and more. Uh, so attack sequence, attack patterns, auto adjust attack location, lock on dodging and so on. So if you want to add, you know, hand to hand combat to your uh, mannequins controller, uh, this is uh, for implementing that. I think it is implemented as a blueprints. Yeah, so it's 10 blueprints and four Niagara VFX. So that is this month's free contents. As I ask you every time, what do you think of this month's contents? And are you hoarding these even if you're not using them? I would say even if you never plan to use Unreal Legend, I, I would just go ahead and hoard these things anyways. In terms of getting access to this stuff, just basically head on over to the free and then free for the month. Uh, now, this is being recorded slightly before this goes live, so this is last month's stuff. Uh, hopefully, you didn't miss out on it. And if you did miss out on it, hey, hit that like and subscribe button, be part of the channel, and you will not miss out on these things in the future. But yeah, that is uh, the September, and oh my goodness, I can't believe it's September already. Uh, content, pretty nice, a pretty nice collection in my humble opinion. But again, I'm curious, what do you think of this month's stuff? So we got the safe house, we got the palace hall, we got the archviz stuff we got the quest editor, and then we have the uh, melee pack this month. Uh, what's your favorite? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.